Patricia Marshall served as the White House Social Secretary in the Clinton administration and United States Chief of Protocol in the Obama administration. Capricia is currently Ambassador in Residence at the Atlantic Council and is President of Global Engagement Strategies, which advises international, public, and private clients. She is also author of the new book, Protocol, The Power of Diplomacy and How to Make It Work for You. Welcome, Capricia. Hello, it's so great to join you, Marsha, and be here part of Empower. Thank you for being here. Can you talk a little bit about the power and importance of diplomacy? You know, diplomacy is um, sort of the magic that happens in our foreign relations. It's the engagement that our leadership has with one another, uh, building those relationships, one, the President of the United States with his counterparts around the world. And protocol is the foundation for diplomacy. We create the roadmap by which we ask the president to follow. We want to make sure that it's well planned, well designed, and there are no pitfalls along the way. You know, diplomacy is a long game. And so during that time period, we want to make sure that uh, we are investing into this relationship. We're building a trusting relationship with our counterparts on behalf of the president. All of those elements are so incredibly important. Uh, let me give you an example of how protocol really helps in our diplomatic engagements. Uh, when the president was traveling to Mexico for the G20, he was scheduled to meet with President Putin as president for the very first time. Tensions were super high. Uh, there was a lot on the line, many tough issues that had to be discussed. I went and I, I talked to the NSC director about what they were trying to achieve, what were some of the goals. And that allowed me then to put a plan in place for the president and this specific occasion. So I worked with my uh, fellow protocol officer, Asel. Uh, we went about looking for the best room because place matters in protocol. Where exactly they were going to sit, where they were going to engage really could make a difference. And in this instance, it certainly would. We wanted to push President Putin into making some tough decisions. We wanted him to come a little closer and collaborating with us. So we sought out a room that was a bit smaller in size, and luckily we found one, but also had one that was that had a lower ceiling height because a uh, lower ceiling height is known to um, push people into making more concrete decisions. So the time came to greet him. I, I stood there waiting and he was late. A little bit of mindset diplomacy on his part. Um, wanted to sort of convey, oh, I'm a bit in charge here. Uh, but I had my smile on, greeted him, escorted him to President Obama. Now, President Obama is really tall. He's standing there with hand extended, waiting for President Putin. Now, what we had learned just before this meeting that President Putin did not was hoping not to see Secretary Clinton there because she had been critical of his election. Well, after uh, welcoming President Putin, President Obama steps aside and unveils Secretary Clinton standing there, who had a great smile on, extended her hand in welcome and warmth to President Putin. You can only imagine. Well, we had a little bit of mindset diplomacy there because for an instant, he was taken aback. He was surprised. Why is she here? So he's a little off his game. Then we escorted them into the room, and several hours later, we had learned after they emerged that our rigging of that room, our selection of place had actually worked, that they came a little closer on those tough issues like Syria, and, um, and were a little bit more collaborative in their in negotiations thereafter. So we felt pretty good that we had put the president on the right, mat, on the right road uh, to diplomacy. That's a great story and a great example of how amazing your job and the journey you had in both administrations working with such amazing presidents. In your book, you talk about the need for extreme preparation and flexibility. How do you balance the two? Well, one actually is an element of the other. In protocol, you have to be prepared. It's all about doing your research. It's all about walking into that space, knowing everything well in advance of the President of the United States. You never want to set a path that will veer him off onto a rocky road. And, and also, you want to make sure that you're giving him a leg up. 
Preparation is influencing. You're setting people on your path. You're making sure that they're following your road, your design to achieve your goal. It's it's also it when you when you do that, you de-stress people. People are more comfortable in the environment because they now know what they're going to be doing. But also more importantly, not everything always goes according to plan. You have to be flexible. So by having that plan set in place, if by chance there's an off ramp you have to take because one of those elements does not go, you know, as as you had thought that they would, um, you have that plan so you can go back on ramp again and you can, can continue with the plan at hand. So flexibility in your preparedness is super important. You write that empathy is at the heart of protocol and diplomacy. Can you tell us a little more what you mean by that? I think it's actually one of the characteristics uh, that I found uh, most important in both of the presidents that I served, both President Clinton and President Obama. Empathy, um, they understood, they put themselves into the shoes of another so that they could understand what that person was going through, making sure that they made them feel comfortable in the moment, understanding what they're asking of them when they're pushing them to the limit. You know, um, I watched an extraordinary moment between President Clinton and President-elect Bush. It was on my last day in the White House. Uh, myself and then Chief of Staff John Podesta were the only two from the Clinton administration allowed into the White House that day. And um, it, on this day in our country, we have just this extraordinary transition of power. And, and there is a ritual where the current president invites the president-elect and his uh, vice president to uh, the White House. And they have a tea. And that was the case on this day. Now, as you recall, you know, that election was pretty tough between President-elect Bush and, and Vice President Gore. So tensions, again, were really high this day. You know, people were feeling uncomfortable. President, oh, President uh, Clinton knew that, and he wanted to make sure everyone felt at ease. And especially, he wanted President-elect Bush to feel comfortable in this moment. He wanted him to understand, I know I'm handing the reins over to you. So after everyone was loaded into the motorcade, of which I had to do back and forth, back and forth, uh, I then was standing there with these two leaders, and they just put their overcoats on, and President Clinton took President-elect Bush by the shoulder, looked him in the eyes, and he said, come on, let's go do this. And President-elect Bush looked back without really saying a word. He said, don't worry, I've got it. And that instant was the transition of power between two leaders with completely different philosophies about how our country should be run. It was an extraordinary moment. And just because President Clinton approached this with empathy, with understanding for how President-elect Bush could feel. They moved on, our country moved on, without war, without angry words, and, and we were continuing uh, you know, the, to be the beautiful country that we are. That is a wonderful story. I think we could all use a little more empathy and compassion and understanding and protocol. <laughs> I agree, thank you, Marsha. Thank you again for being here. Thank you for being part of our annual convention. We so appreciate you being part of the Empower community. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. It has been a real honor.